Thank you for that, uh, dear Ilya. Talking about the peace and stability, uh, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Arnold uh, Dovely. Uh, you've listened, or we've listened uh, uh, keenly to you, Ilya, but the, the question is now, how do you think uh, uh, these uh, regional elections uh, will go a long way uh, to contribute to this greater uh, stability and peace in the areas, uh, given that, uh, because uh, from the last referendum that was conducted in uh, 2022, uh, precisely in September, we saw also a report from uh, mainstream ma media platforms actually calling it a sham and actually uh, saying Russia uh, manipulated uh, the uh, population in these uh, areas and of course. So now, uh, what can you say? How will these uh, regional elections make a difference and actually uh, bring to light the realities on ground? You had talked about uh, knowing whether it's still an occupied territory or a liberated territory. Yes, thank you, Clarice. Well, first of all, let us uh, inform our viewers and listeners that um, uh, there is indeed those uh, regional elections that were supposed to be, for most of them, they are supposed to be held on a single day on the 10th of September. But owing to security reasons in the uh, new uh, subject of the Russian Federation, uh, which are the, you know, the two popular republics of Donetsk uh, and uh, Luhansk and the uh, regions of Kherson and Zaporozhye, uh, the uh, uh, vote actually started uh, on Thursday, this past Thursday. So obviously for uh, security reason and, and logistics, uh, aiming to make sure that, uh, you know, everybody gets the chance to express their desire to see such and such candidate uh, represent them. Uh, I think uh, Yulia summed it all up pretty well. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you make a good point when you say that the mainstream media uh, will try to undermine the legitimacy of the vote as they attempted to do so last year. But what else was supposed to be done? Uh, allow those people to remain in legal limbo uh, when we know that uh, their own court and of court government in Kiev uh, essentially, uh, and if we go by what Poroshenko said back in 2015, uh, declared them as enemy of the state, uh, and that the Minsk report basically contained uh, all the ingredients to come to a, a solution which would have seen those provinces and republics remain in Ukraine, albeit uh, under some kind of uh, autonomous uh, status, mm -hmm. and that as we as we saw and as uh, Yulia uh, uh, underlined. Uh, we know now that the whole Minsk Accord was a uh, charade and that it was all about gaining time uh, to make sure that force would be used and uh, the will of those populations would be reduced. So we know what happened and uh, the Russian Federation, in that sense, uh, through the special military operation, uh, is the only party that's somewhat abided by the Minsk Accord, uh, I mean, owing to its obligation. Uh, which basically uh, in its annex, uh, annex to Resolution 2202, which crystallized the uh, Minsk Accord at the UN Security Council, called for every party jointly or individually do its utmost to see that the Minsk Accord uh, successfully uh, uh, were implemented. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, the special military operation is... Uh, a direct extension of uh, that will to see that the uh, fundamental objective of the Minsk Accord, as they were initially envisioned, uh, were to be respected, which is to maintain the physical integrity of the local population, mm -hmm. see that uh, their cultural and linguistic rights be respected, and, uh, you know, I guess come up to some kind of solution if then there is no will for autonomy owing to the uh, absence of goodwill from the other partners to this uh, process, uh, the uh, only option left was to provide for a legal way out for those local populations to express themselves. And so once everything is said and done in that particular context, what we are going to be seeing, uh, as we started seeing on the, on the 31st of August, and which will be uh, uh, continuing, I guess, uh, all the way to the tents, tents included, I would assume, is whether or not uh, 
uh, this uh, this will that was expressed last in last year's referenda uh, yeah. will be uh, uh, underlined as having uh, been you know what people really thought at the time, and we can we can assume that this will be the case because obviously uh, those people are now you know yes they are in war zones. I mean, but we're talking about eighty percent of the four regions on the whole you know being pretty much under uh, the Russian Federation control. Mm -hmm. So we're not dealing with a uh, 60 to 40 percent, you know, not far from it. Uh, construction has taken place, infrastructure are being rebuilt, uh, security, which is a fundamental right under the uh, UN Charter, uh, you know, and security of the person, right to live, uh, has been reinforced, reified, and people are going to their own lives by and large, except for, you know, some uh, particular areas. But, uh, you know, there's there's a sense of normalcy coming in and a sense of hope and most importantly there is a legal certainty legal security as to uh the future uh, of those people uh, as a administrative political administrative unit they belong now they are new subject again of the russian federation and uh, uh they intend to uh, uh confirm and uh, uh reiterate their willingness to uh, be perceived as such